Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios as always, and today we're going to be taking another look at HitFilm Express. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Behavior and Blur folders in the Effects tab. We're doing a series here with HitFilm Express, going through all of the effects, kind of um, touching base a little bit on each and every one of them. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so the first folder that we're going to be taking a look at is the behavior folder. But first, let's go ahead and create a comp shot. And we're going to go ahead and add a plain layer. White one is going to be just fine. We're going to make this a little smaller here. That way we can kind of see what's going on. Okay, so now that we've got our plane, um, we're going to go ahead and open up the behavior. And of course, just like um, any other add-on with HitFilm Express, there's going to be a little add-on button right next to the effect that is not, um, that doesn't come with HitFilm Express for free. So if you click that add-on, it'll take you to the FX Home webpage, and it'll, um, you know, go through the steps on purchasing those particular add-ons. Um, and then on that store page that you can see different type of um, packs, they've got a group of add-on a group of add-on effects that you can that you can purchase so the first one is acceleration and just like the name suggests whatever layer that you apply this to is going to um, put an acceleration on that layer and so if we go over to the control panel we're going to min minimize the layer properties and transform because we don't need those it's going to give you a couple of couple of controls here it's going to give you an orientation in the x y and z axis and then of course the speed 360 pixels per second and of course the higher or lower that you make this is going to um, make that object travel faster or slower so if we go ahead and click play here you can see that that uh, square starts to accelerate from its origin point um, whenever the video is played very self-explanatory very simple so what we're going to do here, though, is these little um, arrows on the screen in your viewer, you can actually change the orientation or the direction that the acceleration occurs. If you see over on the left in our controls, we are changing their particular axis depending on what arrows you grab. Um, of course, you can change this manually or you can change it in the um, control window as well. It's the exact same thing. You grab this center one here, it'll actually change the speed and then of course the direction. If you look at these dots here, it will actually show you the travel or the path that that square or whatever um, layer that you apply this to is going to take. And so it's kind of a, uh, if we go ahead and click that play, it'll actually just follow that, that dotted line. So moving on to the gravity layer, we can actually go ahead and delete acceleration. We're gonna go apply the gravity and it is basically the same as the acceleration, only you can't change its direction. It's basically just down, just like how gravity works in the real world. It's not gonna, you can't change the direction of gravity. It's basically, it's just gonna fall. So just like before, if you grab this arrow here, you can actually change the um, speed of the acceleration over on this left side. Now the throw is a little good, is a little bit different. If we go ahead and apply this throw, um, you can see down here you actually have a um, an added tweak that you can make to it. Okay, what this is is this acceleration time is if you move this acceleration time up, what will it will do is it'll accelerate from a dead stop like it is here until you get to 500 pixels per second, which is going to be the default, and it'll take one second to get to that speed. So if we change this to 5,000 pixels per second and change this to five seconds, it will take five seconds to reach 5,000 pixels per second. So you can change that and kind of manipulate things as you want. You can use these sliders to change things. Of course, as just like I did, you can type in your values as well. But the neat thing about the behavior is you can actually use multiple effects to get kind of an interesting animation. So if you were wanting to um, have a throw animation, but at the same time you want it to, you know, like land on a table or you have a, you know, text that you want to make it look like it's been tossed and then land on a surface, you can do that by utilizing some of these behavior effects. What I mean by that is if you use the throw mechanic or the throw effect rather, and then add the gravity on top of that, you can see that we get this arc that kind of Falls. Of course, granted, we've got really high acceleration, so let's go ahead and change that back to 500. And we're going to go ahead and change the, the throw to a little bit higher of an arc, just like that. 
we can actually change the acceleration of gravity down a little bit. And if you look, if we zoom way out, you've got this nice little arc. So you can play with those numbers and get the right feel or the right effect that you were looking for, depending on um, the camera shot that you've got, depending on what you're doing. So those are the behaviors. Now, moving on to the blurs. Um, the blurs are a little bit different. Of course, just like the name suggests, they are different types of blurs. So let's go ahead and explain all of those. We're actually going to add in a little bit of stock footage because, of course, you can't really see a blur on a, on a uh, simple plane. So let's go ahead and close our behavior folder and open up the blurs. So a lot of these blurs are going to do just what the name suggests, that they are going to blur the image. Now, depending on the type of blur that you use, you will get a different look. First and foremost, of course, the angle blur. If we go ahead and add that, what that is going to do, if we open up the control panel, minimize all the windows that we don't need, there are a few presets, okay? Um, long horizontal, long vertical, medium 45, medium 135, short horizontal, and short vertical. What that means is if we go with the medium 135, it will blur that image at a 30 or 135 degree angle, as you can see here. There's, of course, a few different controls that you can use. You can grab the circle that is on your viewer and change the size, which is actually the length of the blur, or you can grab these arrows and you can change the angle at which it is blurred. The cool thing about these is you can keyframe all of these selections so you can change over a period of time what the angle looks or what the blur looks like. Of course, the bilateral blur is something that's going to be an add on with Fil Hit Film Express. Like I said before, if you guys wanted some of those add ons, just go ahead and click that green add on button and it'll take you to the FX homepage. So let's go ahead and get rid of our angled blur and then just put a simple blur on. Um, this one is going to have about the same type of controls as the angle blur, only of course it's not going to be um, angular. It's going to be just a very simple basic blur. Um, so with the blur, um, you always want to remember that you are changing the image itself, not necessarily a filter in front of it. With this next one, think of it more as a filter that's in front of your camera. So we're going to go ahead and grab the diffuse, throw it on there. What this is going to do is think of a, a dirty lens. Okay, That's going to be the best representation that I've got. If we go ahead and ramp this way up, you can see that um, the flares are a little, little more aggressive on the sun setting. Um, you know, some of these shadows and things are kind of... Um, soften a little bit and things get a little bit brighter. Um, this is, this diffuse is really, um, I don't, I, I guess I wouldn't classify it as much as a blur as more of a filter. Okay, so just, just keep that in mind when using the diffuse. Of course, all of these you can apply, you can kind of mess with things and of course make it your own just like you can with any other effect in HitFilm. So let's go ahead and grab the lens blur, moving on to the next one. And this one's kind of cool because this will give you a um, kind of a representation of focus on a mechanical lens. OK, so what you can do is you can actually change the source layer on this one. So if you've got maybe a height map that you want to be using to kind of give you, you know, that edit added um, texture, you can actually go ahead and add in a height map and then apply that as the source layer. It'll give you kind of a neat blurred texture for your um, footage. So down here on all of these little controls, go ahead and play with those. Radius, of course, is going to change the um, radius of the blur. As you, of course, when we turn it up, it's going to the blur is going to intensify. Um, the focal distance, if you change the focal distance, it will actually change the distance at what is focused. So what it's going to look like, it's going to look like that camera is actually, you know, out of focus as opposed to just applying a regular blur. Focal range is very similar. Um, if you were wanting to, you know, maybe you've got some footage that it's all nice and crystal clear. If you've got something in the foreground that you actually want to um, have some contrasting background. And to do that, what I would do is create a simple mask, um, especially if it's just a still image, create a simple mask around the object that you want in the foreground, duplicate that, and then in the back image, 
apply a blur or use a lens blur to try and blur that backward or that background image a little bit. That way you get kind of a little bit more depth, just a little trick if you guys are wanting to do something like that. Of course, you don't have to use a still image. You can use something that's animated too if you want to um, rotoscope a uh, something in the foreground. So moving on to the motion blur. Motion blur is going to be a little difficult with a static image just like this one. It is really meant for things that are keyframed or animated moving across your screen. This is the exact same thing as the little motion blur icon here. If you um, check that on something that's moving, uh, especially text or you know 3D objects that you have that are moving through your viewer, it will actually apply a blur to that. The nice thing about um, using this blur is you can actually change um, the, you can tweak the settings of it, okay? If you didn't apply this and you're just checking the blur icon down next to the 3D icon, um, it'll just apply a, a, a simple blur and you can't change the way it looks. That's the nice thing about the motion blur in the, in the blurs folder. You can change a lot of things on it. Okay, so the radio blur is going to be just like the name suggests. It will blur everything from the center of the viewer or the center of the layer getting more aggressive as we get out. Um, and so let's go ahead and drop down this preset. We're going to actually click heavy and then we're going to change that angle a little bit. And so basically um, what I would, the way I explain this one is think of it doubling the image and then turning each of those images the opposite direction and make them trans, you know, making the transparency of even the first and second one a little lower. I know that's kind of weird to think about, but that's basically what's happening here. So if we change the angle of this, you can actually see that we really have more than one image. If you look at the horizon, we're actually splitting that image in half or duplicating that image and then twisting both of those images. That's really what the um, radio blur is doing. So, and of course, last but not least is the zoom blur. So let's go ahead and get rid of our radial and we're gonna go ahead and put in our zoom. And just like the name suggests, Again, I know this is kind of a uh, kind of redundant, broken record kind of thing, but a lot of these effects are going to be, you know, explain what they are in the name, but some of the little settings down below are going to be, you know, a little different. So let's go ahead and open up the presets. And of course, hyperspeed, if anybody has ever seen a sci-fi movie, this is going to give you that effect. Um, very similar to, you know, running through space. So the nice thing about this is if you're looking for, you know, creating a hyperspeed, it's really rather simple. Let's go ahead and turn off this. We're going to go ahead and add another plane on the very top. We're going to go up here to our effects, type in fract, and we're actually going to add the fractal noise effect on top of that. I'm going to go to the settings or the controls under the no on fractal noise, go to presets, and we're going to go to star field. So after we've added the fractal noise effect and then created that um, star filled preset, we can actually go in to our brightness and contrast effect. We're gonna go ahead and apply that to the new plane as well. And then under preset, click heavy contrast and we can turn the brightness down, turn the contrast way up. Just like that. Let's go back into our effects and go back to our blurs and go to zoom blur. And there you have it. We've got a nice little um, preset that we can apply under hyperspeed. We can actually change the strength of that just a little bit. Just like that. And there you have it. You can actually keyframe a um, a warp speed if you wanted. If you were looking for that kind of that kind of effect, you actually just start from zero here. You can keyframe that strength, go forward a little while, and then you can actually change that value just like that. And if we play through that, it'll give it kind of a warp speed effect. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios, as always. And again, please, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us out tremendously. If you guys have been following along with us, um, it has been a wonderful journey, and we could have not hit that $1,000 mark without all of you. So keep that in mind. If you guys got any questions, any concerns, anything that you want to look at in HitFilm Express or HitFilm Pro, leave a comment down below, and we will see you guys next time.